Okay, this tutorial is going to cover how to start up the aircraft on Falcon 4.37. It's not in depth, it's not meant to be in depth, it's just to get you ready for taxi basically. Uh, before we start the mission, you're going to come over here to the top left, verify you're on the right flight, then uh, double click your aircraft to make sure you're in the right seat, come down to the bottom right, hit data cartridge. Hit the COM button, then hit COM plan, IFF button, IFF plan, hit save. And hit takeoff. We're going to do a ramp start, so we're going to click ramp. All right, we're in the cockpit. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the pilot's body so we can see all of our controls and switches in the cockpit. You do that by pressing Alt, left Alt, plus C, release, and then hit P. Go ahead and cycle whatever throttle you're using in, in real life, your HOTAS, go ahead and take your throttle all the way forward, then back to idle or, or cut off. Come over here to the left side, on electric panel, the switch goes to battery. Come up here, we have the canopy lock lever, this yellow thing right here. To the left of it is a switch. Hold right mouse button to close canopy. Now, right here where the bolt goes through the lock, we're going to left click to close the canopy uh, lock. On the left hand side, fuel panel, this knob goes to norm. On the right hand side, you have this arm support bracket right here. Uh, behind it, if you look at my mouse, you see those green arrows, that's a knob. You're gonna left click once to take the air source knob to norm. If you have track IR or you're a VR, you can you know look past the bracket and actually see the knob. Come back here to the left side. And this power switch is gonna to go to main power, left click all the way forward. Next step is over here on your jet fuel starter panel, you're going to right click the switch to take it to start to. We're going to now come over here to the right hand side of the cockpit. We're going to zoom in a little. We're going to watch our gauges. We're watching this RPM gauge. We're looking for a rise up to about 25%, which will be roughly this first green line. Zoom in a little. Okay, there's our RPM dial. It's almost about 25%. We're going to press left alt plus I at the same time. And this is going to be our idle detent switch we just hit. As you can see, the FTIT gauge is rising because we have fuel introduced into the system. And we're going to wait for the gauge to go up and stabilize before we move on. Um, once the engine takes over and provides power, you're going to see some of these gauges come alive, some of these instruments. So as you can see, fuel quantity comes alive. Watching the RPM still. Should stabilize around 70. And it does. We're going to, okay, so now we're going to come to the back right. Uh, you have the avionics power panel. All these switches are going to go to the up position. Map doesn't. Don't worry about it. GPS DL as well. This EGI knob, you're going to rotate it to the align norm position. Left click. Okay, next step is going to be come up here to the right MFD. You're going to press the DTE page. At the top, you're going to press the load OSB. This is going to load your data cartridge that we had in the 2D menu. Next thing, we come to the back left. We have the flight control page right here. We're going to take the middle switch on the bottom over here, the FLCS switch, to reset. And the bit switch, we're going to take 
up, left mouse button. Uh, while the bit test runs, this run light will be illuminated. Once it's complete, it'll extinguish and the switch will go to off by itself. Next thing we're going to do, come to the IFF panel right here. We're going to take this knob to norm and this right hand knob to UFC. Below that, you have the external lighting panel. You can set them to wherever you want. Uh, just make sure you have your master switch set to norm if you want to see them. In front of that, we have our ECM panel. We take the switch to OPR. Ahead of that, you have your audio panel. COM1 and COM2 knobs are going to be rotated all the way to full increase. You can either left click or you can use your scroll wheel. Past that is the UHF panel. We're going to take this knob to both. Past that is the HMCS knob. We're going to rotate it to full increase. Over here on the left side, you have these four squares. You're going to press the bottom right square. It says power to power your RWR. Our uh, CMS panel right here, you're going to take all these seven switches right here to up. Do not do the jettison switch though. The mode knob over here is going to go to man for manual. Come up here, you see the RWR to the left of it, press the handoff square. To the right of the RWR on the ICP, this uh, rotary knob, you're going to rotate it full up to power up your HUD. All right, next step is we're going to press return down here on the ICP dauber. This is called the dauber switch. We hit return. Then we're going to hit COM2, 1-5, enter. That'll put you on your internal frequency for your flight if you're flying with other people. If you're flying with like some humans right now, you'd go ahead and call in and just check in, let them know you're up. Uh, next step is if you look on the top right of my screen, it says ground EPU safety pin in place. To remove the pin, we're going to hit T and then 1. And you can see it goes away. The ground crew removed the pin for us. Come over here to the right hand side, to the right of the stick. These three switches go up. Last one goes up to the middle to standby. Uh, right here on the internal lighting panel, if you take this uh, middle knob in the uh, top row and rotate it, you can get your instruments all lit up. And this bottom one, uh, the console's knob, will actually give you a full light. We're going to keep both off. Uh, oxygen regular panel, take that green switch to on. Uh, we're going to verify the bit test is done for the flight controls. So back here, it's to the off position to switch, so we know we're good. So we come over here to left MFD, we press test, and at the top we press clear. Come down here to the fuel quantity uh, selection panel, a selector. Uh, we can rotate this knob to external wing if we have uh, wing tanks, or we can take it to external center if we have a uh, center tank. Uh, we don't have either, so we're going to keep it on norm. To the left of our uh, pallet's uh, seat, you right-click the ejection arm handle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and press the COM1 button now. And then we're going to hit 2, enter. And this will put us on tower frequency. If you hit the T key on your keyboard and keep on hitting it until you see request Q and H, press 1. Mud hand, 7 1, John Bond, Q and H2, 9, 8, 7. So we're going to go down to our altimeter here, and we're going to put in 2987, the number he gave us. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to align our helmet mounted queuing system. To do that, we're going to press list, then zero, RCL. Come down to the dauber, we hit sequence, then hit zero. All right, so we're going to... Now align our crosshairs together, and then we're going to press the cursor enable button. As you can see down here, it says align OK. So we come back down to our ICP and hit the return dauber. Just a reminder of the dauber is this little switch down here that says return sequence up and down. All right, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to check our GPS system, our nav system, make sure it's aligned. We do that by hitting six, or excuse me, list on the ICP and then six. And then if you look at your DED over here on the right hand side, I'm zoom into it. On the top right, it's flashing ready. And also if we look at the HUD, it's flashing a line on the bottom left. That means our nav system is ready to be uh, turned on. It's already aligned. To do that, we come to the back right, the avionics power panel. We take the EGI knob to nav with a left click. 
All right, next step is we're going to do the taxi light. So we right click the taxi light right here. Let's see. Next step is going to be removing the chocks. If you look in the top right of my screen again, it says ground chocks in place. So we're going to hit T and then 2 to remove the chocks. Um, at this point, you're pretty much ready for taxi. Uh, the last thing we want to do is enable our Noseville steering to make sure we can uh, turn the aircraft once we start rolling. Uh, you do that by pressing your Noseville steering missile step button. And uh, once you press that, it'll pop up with this ARNWS above the DED right here to the right of the HUD. You can see we now have Noseville steering. And just to verify it, you know, we can taxi forward and we have Noseville steering. We can turn. Um, at this point, you're ready to call up tower and request taxi and take off.